Jesus is coming back soon. And I want to talk a little bit about something that's kind of connected to that in, in some ways. But Jesus is coming back soon. And we are actually all, we have the privilege of running this part of the race. Because in the Bible it also talks about Christian life as being part of the race. Running the race. Sorry. And so we all have the privilege of running this part of the race when we're actually getting close to Jesus coming back. Now, we don't know the day or the hour, but we have lots of signs that are telling us that it's getting closer. Now, yeah, you can say it gets closer every day that goes by. It gets closer. That's true. But there's things that are happening in the earth that the Bible talks about that we have a lot of reason to believe that things are ramping up quite quickly. And so, anyways, but we are all, we have the, we have the, and, and, and often, believe you me, I have to have plenty of reminding sessions for myself that it's actually a privilege to be alive in times that are yet coming before Jesus comes back. Because my flesh reads the Bible and says, eh, no thank you. But my spirit man says, wow. And so that's what, that's the part that I want just to grow and grow and grow in the, in the, in the, in the fleshly man. And well, we got some stuff in here that can take, help take care of some of that stuff. But anyway, there's, we, we're, we're running this part of the race. Now, the good thing too about this race that we're all running is, is that we're all designed and built and called to run. Like whether you're Chris Reimer or whether you're Stefan Reimer makes no difference as far as running this race. We've all been given gifts to help us run the race that we're supposed to be running, that I'm talking about. So how fast you can run one mile or 26 point, whatever miles or all that stuff doesn't matter. We're all built and designed to run the race and we can all win. That's, the, that's also the great thing, is we can actually all win. Now, you guys hearing me okay? So, I'm just going to go to some scripture here. Now, because of the wind, I thought maybe I'd be better off with gadgets rather than my actual Bible. But, um, I just want to remind us, we all know these scriptures probably, but in 1 Corinthians chapter 9... Verse, uh, verse 24, it says this, Do you not know that in a race all the runners run, but only one gets the prize? Like that's like the earthly kind of race that we run, like we actually like put our running shoes on and run. But, it says everyone who competes, okay, sorry, not, not but. Everyone who complete, competes in the games goes into strict training. They do it to get a crown that will not last, but we do it to get a crown that will last forever. Therefore, I do not run like someone running aimlessly. I do not fight like a boxer beating the air. No, I strike a blow to my body and make it my slave so that after I have preached to others, I myself will not be disqualified for the prize. Now, in, uh, in Acts, I'll, I'll just go to Acts here too quickly, or at least try to do it quickly. In Acts 20, verse 24, it says this, However, I consider my life worth nothing to me. Only, my only aim is to finish the race and com to complete the task the Lord Jesus has given me, the task of testifying to the good news of God's grace. Now, kids and everybody else, there's some things in this box that most of you to have the same items wouldn't need quite such a big box. That should be a clue what might be in here. But if we're going to run a race, what, what do I, if I want to run a race and I want to do well, what do I need to have? To, what do I need to put on to run well? What's that? Running stuff. Running stuff. So what is running stuff? Socks. Socks. Shoes. Okay, so. Yeah. 
No! What shoes should I pick? You think I should wear those for running? Now, okay, I agree with you. If we were gonna run, I even got socks here. Don't look too closely at them. Um, but if we were gonna run like a running race, I absolutely would put those on. But I wanna just remind us about some things, okay? Just bear with me here for a second here. When I put these boots on, I don't feel like running, but I tell you what I do feel like doing. Now, you guys have never had size 16 steel-toed boots on before, but I have. Now, when I put these boots on, I feel like stomping things. <laughs> That's true. I'm not even telling, a, I'm telling the truth. When I put these on, I feel like stomping on things. Just give me a second here. I don't want these boots to fly off and hurt somebody. But there's, um, yeah, just, just, sorry. I, I just got to just give me a second here. But what I wanted to tell you guys is that, so the race that I'm talking about isn't actually a running race. It's this race that we all are built to run and we all can win. Now, even as I talked about before, we're in this race, and it's a really special part of the race because it's the part where right before the king comes back, Jesus Christ is coming back to this earth to make all the wrong things right. He's coming back to rescue his bride and to be with his bride forever. Brothers and sisters, that's you and I. Kids, I don't know who, if, if you could have anybody over this afternoon in the whole world, I don't know who you'd choose, Probably not me, but if you could have anybody in the whole world over, times it by a billion how exciting it would be is if you could have Jesus. Being in Jesus' presence is going to be like nothing we can imagine. Right now we have things that we get excited about, but being in his presence is going to be way better than anything that we could imagine. But anyways... We're in this special part of the race, but the special part of the race has, there's this battle going on between good and evil, between Jesus and his kingdom. Jesus, Jesus is bringing his kingdom. His kingdom will take over the kingdom of darkness and actually boot it off the earth. Now, kids, I want to just, I want your attention here again, and adults for sure too, but when things get hard, at home, and that can mean, it doesn't have to be like hard, hard. It could just be like when things don't go your way. What are you tempted to do if things don't go your way? Are you tempted to sing and dance and shout about how great God is when things don't go your way? Yeah. You are? Well, that's what you should do, but you're probably not tempted to do that. Because when you do that, when things aren't going your way, somehow things just change. But, you guys, I don't want to beat a dead horse, but these boots are good for kicking things and stomping on things. And so, we're on this journey, we're in this race, and stuff happens. Oh, I was going to play with that toy, and they went and took it from me before I could get to it. That was a really sweet toy, and I was really looking forward to playing with it right now. Uh-oh, who's knocking on your door trying to give you advice right about now? Yes. There's also another knocking on your door also wanting to give you advice. And what's that advice? Come. Yes, and he's coming through, we could call it self-what? Self-pity, selfishness, it's all the self. Jesus wants to take our eyes off ourself and put it on him. So, <laughs> when self-pity's knocking, what should you do? You put on your work boots and you give them a good boot. And if one boot doesn't do it, you give them another one. But it's really important that we get the fact that, and I'm being silly here, but 
we all struggle with self-pity all the time, kids and adults alike. Maybe it's like, oh, she said something mean about me. But then we go, wow, 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 off to whoever. Well, if somebody says something mean to you, maybe it's like, maybe it's even your brother or sister, because I know I sometimes said mean things when I was younger. Oh, I still do sometimes. I'm sorry. I shouldn't talk that way. I still say things inappropriately that I need to r repent for. But when we, when we behave in a way that's not appropriate, we need, to make, we need to make things right. But what I was going to say is we always have choices, many choices a day of how we're going to respond. So maybe, maybe it's a kid. Maybe you kids, you, you know, you have whatever. You're, something, you're really excited about something and you're planning to do this, but then somebody else kind of ruins the plan in a moment. And you can have a big boohoo party about it. Or you can say, oh man, I was really hoping to play, but you could say to yourself, but you know what, I'm going to do things Jesus' way, and then you say, Jesus, please help me. And sometimes you need to go and talk to mom and dad or the teacher or some other supervising adult. But we, wanted, we don't want self-pity getting its way. Now, I don't know if I should really walk around with these too much longer. But um, what I was going to say is, running the race... The way God wants us to looks different than the world because the world would have us put these shoes on and just run and get the best for yourself. Just think about yourself. Get your way. As much as you can, get your way. All the time. But let these big boots be a reminder that you're not looking to get your way. You're looking to get Jesus' way. And His way is different than the world's way. And now I've tied a knot in here I can't open Okay, I got it. A little more work than I had hoped for. Okay. And it's, it's good to learn these lessons along the way as much as we can. Because God is wanting to teach us a whole pile of things. God is raising up a wholehearted, a pure and a spotless bride for His Son Jesus. And what does it take to get a wholehearted, pure and spotless bride? What does it take? If you think of James chapter 1, what does it take? To be mature and complete, not lacking in anything. We need trials. Who loves trials? Trials is what we need to become mature and complete, not lacking in anything. Because it says in James that we should consider it pure joy, my brothers and sisters, whenever you face trials of many kinds, because we know that the testing of our... Um, Yeah, I don't know why right now. Right now it's not coming to me. But we know that we know that the testing of our faith produces perseverance, and perverse, perseverance must finish its work that we may, may be mature and complete, not lacking in anything. And so earlier I read about Paul, what he was saying in 1 Corinthians, and he was talking about he didn't run aimlessly and he didn't box as like just beating the air now again i just want to bring out some some examples because even kids what do you get excited about hey guy you young guys if i told you that um we had a fight and we're, we need to uh we're gonna we're gonna get some spears and bow and arrows and we got some some uh, i don't know what but we, we, you know, what kind of guys don't get excited about about you know going into battle in a in a you know in that kind of way, right? We like watching the good guys get the bad guys, um, and oftentimes we can get excited about doing things in the flesh, but we want to do things in the spirit. And so, 
if I do things in the flesh, when something goes, doesn't go my way, I go over there and I grab it and I take a hold of it and now it's mine. I'm going to be having this right now. Thank you. But that's not the way we want to do it. That's the world's way. And so when we, when we look to Jesus and we want to do things Jesus' way, so it means we put aside selfishness. It's okay if I can't play with this toy right now. I'll maybe get a chance later. That guy can play with it first. And the more we can think that way, the more we can be thankful for when good things happen to other people and not get offended when things happen to us that we don't like, the more that we're going to become mature and complete, the more that we're going to grow in Jesus. We don't want to be just boxing as in beating the air, swinging wildly. We don't want to be running aimlessly. I know Myra one time, we were on holidays and there had just so happened to be a marathon or a half marathon or something going on. And I guess it wasn't a very or well organized one and there was a, some poor folks there. The course wasn't marked out too well and they were running aimlessly back and forth. They didn't know where to go. That's a little bit frustrating for those poor, poor runners. Now, uh, regarding self-pity and selfishness and just thinking about self, it can, it can, be, it, it can have such a detriment, it can have a, a very detrimental effect on us when we, because we might be thinking, well, nobody understands me, da, 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 or I lost my job because I, well, these days it could be because you weren't going to get vaccinated, you could lose your job, or we can just ramp it up a little bit, not even that much. I'm in jail because I'm standing for Jesus, or it could be, and things are coming. It tells us in the Bible, it tells us in, in Mark, it tells us in Luke, that there's actually going to be family and friends betraying one another in the end. There's going to be people that we thought were our friends, that we thought loved us, that we thought we were in this together, all of a sudden we find that we've been betrayed even unto death. If we can't, if we don't choose to set our hearts now when the tests are small and they're growing slowly, but what are we going to do? What are we going to do when, they, when, they're, when they're turned up a hundred times? And we don't need to worry we just need to keep our eyes on Jesus. But, but today, today we want to keep our eyes on Jesus and we want to choose to grow and mature in the trial versus complaining about it, versus having this, oh, poor me. Oh, poor me, I lost my job. Oh, poor me, now I can't pay my mortgage. Oh, poor me, maybe I have to actually sell my home and downsize or whatever. These aren't, oh poor me, circumstances. To the flesh they are, but they're not. We have so much in Jesus. We have, it's all about us honoring Jesus. And if we look to him and trust him, he will provide. It might not be on my terms, but I don't want life on my terms. I want life on his terms. And so I want to encourage us, brothers and sisters, that we, that we run the race of life with our eyes on Jesus and not being fight. The, the enemy wants to come and he wants to get us discouraged and he wants us to feel down and he wants us to attack each other and he wants us to be ticked off and anything that he can do, he wants to come to steal, steal kill and destroy. But I want to just encourage us that in this season, even now there's craziness going on in multiple facets but we need to be aware in some ways because Jesus tells us too that we need to be alert we need to watch and pray we need to be on guard he warns us many times do not be deceived by anyone or anything so we need to be paying attention and do our due diligence in some areas um, but it's we need to be in tune with Jesus even when we think of, yeah, tomorrow, tomorrow's election here in, in Canada. And, and we need to be praying about that. We need to be asking the Lord. But even as we talked about and prayed about some last night, and I think some other prayer meetings in the recent past as well, we need to be asking Jesus 
what's on his heart? What is he doing? And how can we best partner with him? Even in this, how can we as the church best partner with Jesus in bringing his kingdom? God has a plan. That plan involves us as the church waking up and just moving more and more and more into wholeheartedness, more and more into understanding of who he is and what he's about, what he's up to. And I can promise you, just because it's in the Word, that part of that plan is, is well, there's a lot of purification process, and purification takes trials. And so we just want to be a church that's praying the best we know how, but still always continually asking the Lord for more understanding of what is He up to. This global situation that we have right now is far bigger than my job and what's happening with my job. That's part of life. It's, part of, it's something that I need to be praying about and trusting God and whatever that. And I'm just, whatever, for all of us, in whatever circumstances we find ourselves in. We don't need to worry what's going to happen if, if a bunch of us lose our jobs. We don't need to worry about that. It's a reality. I, wanna, I want to... Um, I want to say that, that it's a reality that there could, there's, in the Bible, there's a lot of details given in some ways. And even just watching what's unfolding now, we don't know how far is it going to continue, how quickly was it going to be stopped or whatever, but there's, there's things going on that we need to be wary of. And sometimes fear, probably often fear wants, it wells up. It's like, oh no. We need, to, we need to continually wash ourselves in the Word and, and focus on Jesus. Because He is going to, He promises to be with us. He will provide. He will make a way even when there seems to be no way. He doesn't promise that the way is going to be without hardship. But he is going to be with us and he will give us whatever we need and I, I, I just I want to I want to encourage us as to we need to be so reminded and consider what's going on and be praying about it and talking to the Lord about it talking to each other praying with each other encouraging one another and talking about the different realities that are that are scary to the flesh but Jesus has an answer and he will if we keep coming to him and if we don't ex if we don't settle for less he will bring us to the place of peace he will bring us to the place of 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 rest even in the middle of a storm These current events that we have going around, we can get stuck talking about all kinds of like really small stuff. And I think probably sometimes some of that is good on some of the details for sure. But I also it has been said and talked about in the recent um, prayer meetings and things. But we need to keep the we want to have a focus like what's what is going on in the world, not in a dismayed sort of way. But Jesus, what are you up to? What is happening? How do we? How do we partner with you in this? And I think something that was maybe, it's going to be for a different time, but again, Hope Church, house of prayer for everyone. Our, our calling is to be a house of prayer. And what does God want to do with us as far as the house of prayer? I know he wants to grow it, not shrink it, I know he wants to grow it. And I know that that's going to take, it's going to take taking the focus off myself, off yourself, and setting it on Jesus. What's, what does Jesus have in mind for us as individuals and as a corporate body? What is, what is on his heart? Because the only church that's going to make it till the end is going to be a, 
is going to be a house of prayer. It's going to look different all over the place, trust me. But it's going to be people that are very connected to the Lord and that are believing in prayer and believing in God to do what He says He's going to do in the midst of completely impossible situations. And so, I don't know, I just, it's just on my heart, I just want to encourage us as a family, church family, to, let's, to be diligent, to be alert, and to not let these different circumstances that we are finding ourselves in, let it, let it not be unto complaining and grumbling. Let it not be unto, unto division and whatever. Let, let us just say no to all those things that the enemy wants to bring in to just sow discord and division. Let's say yes to Jesus. What are you doing? Yes, these circumstances, there's many circumstances that we might, might not like. And if we had a choice, we would choose it not to have that way. But what can we learn? What is the Lord wanting to teach us in this moment? In the book of Hebrews, we've talked about this verse lots in the last year or so. But it just says here that we should hold unswervingly to the hope we profess. For he who promised is faithful. And let us consider how we may spur one another on toward love and good deeds. Well, just one little word about spurring one another on. I used to think that spurs was like, you know, Wild West Cowboy, like... <laughs> but my daughters who have taken horse riding, some of them, have informed me that a really good rider who knows how to use the spurs basically never, ever, ever does that. It's just a gentle application of the spurs to get the response that is required. But anyways, we should be encouraging and, and spurring. And there again, we need to be really considering how to do things the Lord's way. But we need to be spurring one another on toward love and good deeds. Not giving up meeting together as some are in the habit of doing. But in encouraging one another and all the more as you see the day approaching and like I said earlier we can see the day approaching there are things happening that are in scripture that we can see there is things that are on the move and the Lord wants us to keep gathering together and more and more so Father here we are I just ask, Father, that you'd come and encounter us. God, by your Spirit, that you would come and stir our hearts. That you would, by your Spirit, put a fire inside of us. That you would blow on it and fuel it. That we would do our part of spending time with you and your Word. Worshiping, praising, existing, lifting up your name. And just walking in obedience, God, help us. Father, help us in this season to just keep our eyes on you and to be, uh, to be in communication with you, God. I mean, we want to hear what you want to say to us. We want to hear what you're saying to us, God. We want your heart for the community and for the nations. We want to grow into the house of prayer that you want us to be. So just come and lead us, Father. Without you, we're sunk. But we have you. You desire to be with us. Lord, show us any ways in which we're pushing you away. Just help us to embrace you. To embrace your ways.